In Genesis, God creates Adam and Eve. And he says, this is why a man shall leave his father's house and cling to his bride, and the two shall become one flesh. Now, it is true that he was speaking about marriage and the foundations of the theology of marriage, but it had a greater mystery. Jesus raises marriage to the level of a sacrament because it was to symbolize something greater than just the union of two persons. It was to symbolize the union of Christ to his church. Why did God the Son leave the Father's house? He left the Father's house and became man so that he might cling to his wife, the church, and that the two might become one flesh. St. Paul speaks about this, this great mystery being about Christ and his church. The two are one flesh. St. Paul learned this lesson when he was persecuting Christians, and Jesus knocked him off his horse and said, Saul, Saul, why are you persecuting me? Me. In other words, you touch the Catholic Church, you touch Christ, because the two are one flesh. They're one flesh. And so when Jesus is speaking about the wedding guests not being able to fast while the groom is with them, he's speaking about the fact that he has arrived, and these three years of his public ministry was the wedding celebration. He had a three-year-long wedding celebration. He would then enter into those marriage vows, we could say, at the Last Supper when he took bread and said, This is my body. And the chalice, this is the chalice of my blood. And he gave himself to us in the beautiful gift of the Holy Eucharist. Completely he gave himself to us. And we, like a bride, receive the gift of Christ Jesus as he gives himself completely to us as groom. He consummates his marriage on the cross as he hangs there and speaks those last words of his, it is consummated. This is why the fathers of the church always refer to the cross as the wedding bed upon which Christ consummated his love for his church, where he gave her his all. And then he rises from the dead. He ascends into heaven, sends the Holy Spirit down upon the apostles. The church is now born, and the church now has to enter into a time of fasting and prayer because the groom was taken away. But the reason why the Lord had to have this period or gave us this period of transition between the Old Testament and the New Testament in regards to fasting and penance is because there were two different things. In the Old Testament, before the marriage, before we had the state of grace, while we were still in the state of original sin, penance and fasting was no more than an expression of sorrow. You fasted and you did penance in order to express to the Lord that you were sorry for your past sins. And that was important to do. But God was not obliged to receive it because we were in the state of mortal sin. We were incapable of meriting or original sin. We couldn't merit. And so we had to wait until the new time of grace and the gifting of the gift of sanctifying grace, the gift of the state of grace for penance and fasting to take on a new power and a new strength. When the Lord speaks about the old wineskin or the old torn cloth, he's talking about the old covenant. It was good, but it can't contain that which God is about to give in the new. Got to close it off. He closes the chapter on the Old Testament and opens the chapter on the new covenant. That will be cut, not in the sacrifice of animals, but will be cut in his own flesh as he sacrifices himself for love love of us, a perpetual sacrifice, a perpetual offering, the holy sacrifice of the Mass that's perpetuated at every single Mass. Mass is not merely a meal where we kind of hang around and have a little meal. No, it's not a table. It's an altar. You eat a meal on a table, you offer sacrifice on an altar. It's the perpetual sacrifice of Christ. The same priest, Jesus Christ, offering the same sacrifice, Jesus Christ, to the same God and Father of heaven. 
in an unbloody way, we perpetuate the offering of the Son to the Father. This is the new covenant. In the old, we were cut off from God in the state of original sin. In the new, we were brought into the life of the church, into his bride, grafted onto the body of Christ, wedded to him. In the new covenant, you and I have become one with Christ Jesus, brought into the state of grace. This is the new wine. This is the new cloth. These are the new wineskins that the Lord is going to pour that new wine into. And in this new state, in this new covenant, in the state of grace, when you and I fast, when you and I do penance, it is not simply an act of sorrow. It has power like it never had before. When you and I offer our penances, our sacrifices, our fasting, in union with the sacrifice of Christ Jesus, It is received by the Father. It becomes one with His. It becomes part of the offering. Why? Because you and I have been grafted onto the very body of Christ, the church. You and I have been wedded to Him. We are the body of Christ. And I don't mean let's hold hands and say, Kumbaya. No. We're not talking about a nice feeling. We're talking about the truth of the reality of the gift of the sanctifying grace, the gift of the state of grace that unites us to Christ Jesus and allows us to make it act of our will to offer our prayers, our fastings, our penances in union with Christ to the Father to draw down grace on the world. This is our way of participating in the passion of Christ. This is the new wine. This is why Jesus gives a little bit of a breath in between the Old Testament and the New Testament. In the Old Testament, fasting and prayer, it was nothing more than an act of repentance which God was not bound to receive. He did in His mercy. But in the New Covenant, because of our union with Christ Jesus, because of this grafting onto the body of Christ the church, because we are wedded to Him, Christ is now bound. The Father is bound to receive it. And he merits it. Suffering, penance, fasting has become powerful. So powerful that we are able to participate in the redemption of other souls with our Lord, under our Lord. But we unite our sufferings, our penances to His. We offer them to the Father with that perpetual offering of Christ Jesus. And we draw down grace upon souls. When Our Lady came to Fatima, she repeated over and over and over again in Fatima to do penance. To make reparation for sins against the sacred heart of Jesus, the Immaculate Heart of Mary. To pray for the conversion and do penance, offer sacrifices for poor sinners. In one of the visions of the children of Fatima, they saw a fiery sword of an angel that was consuming the earth, the fire. And Our Lady held out her hand and held back the sword of the angel. And the angel pointed to the earth and said, penance, penance, penance. This importance for us to unite our sufferings to that of Christ Jesus, our penances, our voluntary penances, our fastings, unite them to the offering of Christ to the Father and ask the Lord to have mercy on souls. To have mercy on poor sinners. To have mercy on our world, on our family members. We no longer just do penance simply to express our sorrow. We are now doing penance as a way of participating in the very passion of our Lord Jesus Christ. Some of you may remember the old Mass from years ago when the priest faced the same direction as you, prayed to God on your behalf, facing the same direction as you. And the altar servers would come out. And when the priest would hold up the Eucharist after consecration, the altar servers would pick up the back of his garment and lift it. They'd hold the back of the chasuble, the priest, and hold it up while he's holding the Eucharist up. They were doing that as a symbol that they, in representative of the people, were offering themselves with the sacrifice to the Father. They were participating, they were assisting, they were, part, they were placing themselves with the Lord in the offering. You and I, my brothers and sisters, have been united to Christ Jesus in a new way. 
The Lord has given us new wineskins. In other words, he's given us the state of grace. Something Moses didn't even have. Our first parents didn't have. We're in a better state than Adam and Eve were. We're in a better state than Moses was. They were baptized. We are. We have been given this beautiful grace of being grafted onto the very body of Christ the church, wedded to Christ Jesus. And you and I have the capacity now to receive this new wine and this new wine skin of our soul and be able to offer ourselves our penances, our fastings, all of our pains and hurts, whether they're physical, spiritual, emotional, psychological, unite them to the cross of Christ Jesus, particularly at the holy sacrifice of the Mass, and offer them to the Father to draw down grace upon the world. That's why our Lord tells them, you're not going to fast during the wedding feast. When the wedding feast is over, then they'll fast. Because after the wedding feast is the consummation of the marriage, when our Lord gives himself in the Eucharist, offers himself on the cross, dies for us and rises and gives us the Holy Spirit. Now it's time to fast. Which is why on Fridays it's still required that we fast from meat. And if not from meat, then we do some other form of penance. It's why it's still part of our life as Catholics to do penance, not just during Lent, giving up gum, (laughs) but to do penance throughout our days. Little penances. When the children of Fatima asked Our Lady uh, what type of penance they should do, she said, make everything you can a sacrifice. Everything you can. And she taught them this prayer. She said, when you make sacrifices, say, Jesus, I do this for love of you, for the conversion of poor sinners, and in reparation for sins against the Immaculate Heart of Mary and the Sacred Heart of Jesus. Now, little Jacinta would always tap on, and for the Holy Father, because she always wanted to pray for the Pope. A little eight, a little six-year-old. But we all, for these sacrifices and penances, our fastings, for love of Jesus, for the conversion of poor sinners, in reparation for sins against the Immaculate Heart of Mary and the Sacred Heart of Jesus. We who have been wedded to Christ Jesus have an incredible power in the gift of being able to offer everything and anything in union with Christ to the Father. Archbishop Fulton Sheen used to say, in hospitals, there's a lot of wasted suffering. Our sufferings go to waste when they're not offered. When we unite them to the cross of Christ Jesus, they become powerful. Your arthritis is kicking in, united to the cross of Christ Jesus and offered up. Offered up doesn't mean shut up, doesn't mean put up. It means offer it to the Father. Right? Sciatic, it hits the back, offer it up. You're impatient driving with the traffic up on the road over there, and you want to tell everybody the number one, pull the hand back to the steering wheel, shut the mouth, and offer it up. So many things we can offer. Little things, aggravation, suffering, sorrowful things. If our hearts are sorrowful for various things in our life, Lord, I unite this sorrow in my heart, missing my deceased loved one. I unite it to your cross and I offer it for the conversion of sinners, for love of you, and reparation for sins against the Immaculate Heart. Nothing is wasted with God when given to God. Today, as we hear this beautiful reading of our Lord telling us that we're going to fast in the future, not right now, well, the wedding's over, folks. (laughs) The wedding has happened. You and I were brought into this church mostly as us as babies in a wedding garment. We were wedded to Christ. We are now one with him. It's time to enter into the beautiful, beautiful, powerful grace of the sacrifices and penances our Lord wishes us to make and to receive so that you and I can assist him in bringing souls back to faith and bringing peace to this world. May the Lord grant us the grace to do penance, the grace to fast. Pray for that grace so that we can truly enter into the mystery and the beauty of the cross of our Lord Jesus Christ. May God bless you and Mary keep you.